Ever had a blocking pass you loved, and then you hit the spline button and... It turns into mush? Early in my career, I kept running into this. I would create very nice story poses and then jump right in my spline. Suddenly I was getting gimbal locks like KFK blending weirdly and arcs that were just falling apart. I didn't know it was a bad workflow issue. I would just fix the frame by frame and it was counter animation chaos. It felt like every time I would get notes it meant redoing the shot and I was always late and I was always struggling. It wasn't until I understood the why behind blocking, the planning that comes with it, that I leveled up and even eventually got promoted. This tutorial is the one I wish I had back then. What blocking really is. Blocking isn't just your initial pass. Obviously it is that, but it's much more. It's your shot safety system. It's where you plan your physics, your timing, your spacing, your squashing, your stretch, and your fundamentals. And make sure that it is editable. You're building a version of your shot that you can still change later. And that's what saves time, not costs more time. Plan your technical transitions. IK is when your limb stays planted, and FK when it flows freely. If your character goes from pushing a door to swinging an arm, or from a pose that involves a lot of arcs and then pushing something or grabbing something in contact with an object, that's an IK FK switch. Plan it. Keep clearly, or spline will do something ugly that you didn't ask for. Space switching. It happens when your control's parent changes. For example, if you're putting your uh, hand on your head and moving your head around, or you're picking up a prop or throwing it. If you didn't align the switch on the right frame, it won't blend smoothly. Result? Snap, a pop, a floating object with no logic. Rotation order. Gimbal lock. It's that nightmare when you can't rotate your torso properly anymore. It happens when you rotate multiple axes and Maya gets confused about the priority. You can avoid it by planning your rotation paths or changing your rotation order before you spline. Another thing you can do is place your god node conveniently for your rotation orders because some rigs do not have that option built into them or the pipeline. Distill the fundamentals from reference. Reference isn't about copying. A lot of people get this wrong. It's about extracting. Extracting what? Extracting fundamentals. Extracting principles. Extracting ideas. Look for timing beats. Look for force, weight shift, reversal, squash, stretch, texture, secondary action. And at thumbnail stage, I already know where the phrasing and contrast go. I already know that a certain part of the shot and its rhythm is slow or fast or there's a little bit more squash or there's a little bit more dynamism in the pose or it's a little bit more still and I'm living within the poses so I'm not guessing when I'm in Maya. Doing stuff in 3D is expensive, it's time consuming, so it's better to plan it out first than have headaches later. That one shift alone cut 80% of my redos because the direction was baked in before I even started animating. Lay clean editable keys. I used to animate every controller at once. It looked great until I got feedback. Then the whole shot fell apart when I try to change anything. Blocking isn't about detail, it's about control. Pose every three to five beats. Use the COG, use the spine, the chest, the head, the main limbs. Stay in stepped or flat tangents, leave the offsets for later. Another thing that's important is to lay the fundamentals. You don't want to overkey your timeline, but you want to have specific surgical keys where the fundamentals like squashing and stretching and overlaps are already embedded in your poses and planned out ahead. If you can't do this right now, don't worry, it comes with experience, but put that intention there so that your direction is very clearly laid out in your shot. Thumbnailing versus experimenting. Thumbnailing is not art. It's idea distillation. I thumbnail the rhythm, the silhouette, the force, the shots direction, where things are fast, where things are slow, and I use that as a map. Experimenting comes later, once I've committed to the direction. So you lay down every single 
important aspect of your shot's physics, performance, and narrative. And once you have that, you then experiment with small tweaks. For instance, if you blink a little sooner or later, or if your head turns a little bit sooner or later, but whilst preserving those keys. I didn't learn all this stuff from a course. I learned it fixing broken splines in production under pressure. Now blocking is my shield. It's how I avoid chaos, protect my posing, and finish faster than ever. Yes! Don't treat blocking as a throwaway. It's the blueprint of your shot. It's your edit buffer, and it's your creative compass. Blocking to spline is really when you make it or break it, whether your shot either becomes real or it dies. If this helped, go to andthemastery.net and get the free animation guide on the five beginner mistakes that wreck your shots before you even get notes. And if you're stuck during the polish stage, I've also got something coming up for that real soon. Thank you for watching.